So today, okay, we are going to be installing a wig. We're going to use the stocking cap method, okay? I'm just so happy that my voice is not crunchy because I don't know what's been going on. Like, I could just scream one time and my voice is gone. So, yeah, we're doing the um, stocking cap method. I like that method because it definitely secures those edges. You know, we got to secure that edge. So, I'm using the guys to be sprayed to kind of just push her hair out the way. And then I'll bring that cap down and over it. And then it's locked and loaded after that. Like, so, once I, I'm swooping her hair back just so that no hair is coming down with the cap to be laid over her forehead. So, when you lay that glue, it's not actually touching any of your hairs on that hairline, my honeys. Because that's something that we do not play with. So, cutting that ear, you want to make a tiny incision in that cap like I'm somebody's doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but I like for my cap to grip my ear, you know, so when I go laying it that, you know, it's not going to move anywhere and it's securing my sideburn as well. You know, I don't want no glue on my hair. So I'm using the spray. The spray to me is pretty messy, but I have mastered it so that it doesn't drip. It's better to just use the gots to be, um, you know, the um, squeeze or whatever. And when I put it on my honey's eye, it makes it transparent. You can see straight through to the hairline. So start back, you know, don't spray on that forehead. Just start back so that you can see exactly where that hairline is starting and then move it down with your finger to see where it's ending. Cause you don't want to put too much spray on your skin and you got to peel that back and that hurts too. And that could pull out your edge as well. Okay. so. You want to have it completely dry, all right, and then go along what's already down and just cut along it. And then at some point when you put the wig on to kind of measure things out, because that's what you would do, um, if it's too much cap anywhere, you would have to pull it back and cut that off because you don't want to be able to see it through your lace. You know, it doesn't look right, even with the makeup on it or anything. It doesn't come out right. You can still tell. So, you honeys will see in a minute, but I'm going to just go ahead and cut this cap off and I'll be back with the next step. So I'm putting the wig down because at this point, my honeys, I want to see if um, the cap is too far down for her hairline of the wig, okay? So I'm measuring that thing out, getting the eyeball for it and all that. This is a wig that she already had. She brought it to me. Uh, I bleached the knots and I also plugged it a little more. So she already had wore it before, but at this point, she got Kale's hands on it. So we're going to make it right, okay? So not that it wasn't right before, but um, I'm going to just put my touch to it. So I have put, you know, I bought where my wig will lay and everything. And the cap for her was perfect, okay? I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh stick that's my contour stick but she's dark skin so i have to get something that matches her color so that's the darkest that i have and um it's actually just a concealer stick for real and if you notice those tabs on the side they didn't get stuck down but when you put your first layer of glue that's when you will go ahead and get those uh, tabs down and you don't even have to worry about that. So don't worry about going back in, spraying it with the guys to be or even putting guys to be on there to lay that down. That's a waste of time and it will be very messy. Just use the glue when you go to put it along that hairline. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys in a second how much glue that you should use to make sure that your lace is not going anywhere okay but the whole motive to this is to make sure you put that makeup in that cap okay so around those edges where you cut it will be white and it will be you know the color of the cap it won't be blended so you blending that makeup through that cap around those edges real good real good with that brush okay that's pretty much what you're doing it's to camouflage it with the skin 
and you're gonna also put it on the lace okay so put it along that hairline on the lace or whatever and then once you pull that lace down you will put it over the top of the hairline as well so under the lace and over the lace will give you a success of blendage okay and that's what you would call tinting your lace so if you don't have the tinting spray you're not doing any techniques to actually tint the lace to your clients or your complexion that makeup comes in handy so putting it on the front and the back side will definitely tint that lace and make it look very very natural I am using Ghost Bond Supreme. Okay, now Ghost Bond has a regular, then they have a Supreme, and I'm sure they have another one. I feel like Supreme would be good for um, sweaters and stuff like that. And then that's just my little um, stick that I'm using today to apply. I know that um, you guys should know by now that one of the hair companies sent me that three in one. And you guys said, oh, that'll be perfectly used for the lace, you know, for the glue. So I'm like, you know what, you're right. So it's like once you use that every, because you, at this point, I'm going to be putting like three or four coats of the glue. And every time after you finish one layer of glue, you need to wipe that stick off because it gets pretty sticky. Okay. And then it will be messing up your smoothness that you're trying to achieve putting this glue on there so as you can see i am just using that glue to put that um that cap down you know those tabs and that's easy peasy it's nothing you know and then at this point we're going to put three four more co coats so it won't be going anywhere my honeys and um when you're putting that glue on there you want to smooth it out okay you would take some alcohol clean around that cap area so therefore that makeup that you put on there could be removed don't don't clean the cap just clean the skin and make sure you get all the extra residue that's not needed from that makeup and then as you start applying your glue my honey you want to smooth it out okay you don't want any lumps and bumps in there you just want it to be smooth so that therefore it can dry clear quickly and you won't have any if you see spots in it that's still white here and there you didn't smooth it out good enough you see i'm smoothing that out i'm going through it making sure there's no extra spots to be done and then once i get it all smoothed down I'm just assisting it at this point with the blow dryer to turn clear because you really don't want to put another cloak coat on top of the white okay because that mean that layer isn't dry and now another layer okay is really not going to be dry so um you want it to look transparent you know like just a gloss that's how it will look once it's dry okay no white but sometimes you have those stubborn spots that's just still there you know so once you go to lay your wig over that okay it shouldn't be anything major maybe a spot here or there but once you lay your lace over that okay you take your comb and then you comb that lace through comb through it and kind of mesh it down with the comb and then blow dry it so don't go trying to tie it down with the band or anything until you blow dry it first because if you go smashing on those white spots it's going to come through your lace and then it's going to be shining bright through that lace and then you can see it like and you don't want that you want your hairs to freely move and not be stuck down to the lace or your head because you had extra glue sitting there so like i said i gave her at least like i want to say three to four coats of this glue and then um once i go in to kind of smooth it down you bring your wig down and you pull it over that glue okay you pull it over as far as you could or whatever and that's just going along the shape of your head so once you pull it over don't think that you have to put the edge of the lace right where the glue stops no bring it on over okay stick it down wherever it's sticking and when it's all said and done that's when you will cut your lace okay whatever excess hair you got whether you still got hairline in it and it's hair cutting too oh well because this is your natural shape that you're cutting it into you don't want anything straight across if you cut along your natural hairline that wig will definitely look very natural you probably won't even need baby hairs because it's that natural my honeys
Okay, finally, my honeys, we are on our last um, coat. And um, I'm going to show you guys exactly how thick or at least the width of glue that I have. Okay, so you want all that to be clear before you go laying that lace. And if you smooth it out properly, look at my daughter extra. <laughs> if you smooth it out properly, as you can see, there's no lumps or anything in there. So it's going to smooth out and turn clear great and that's how much glue you would want to put on there for long lasting okay now her lace was already cut so it gets a little you know it ain't yeah maybe a little difficult to try to lay it because you don't have any assistance so you have to pull on the hair to actually get it where you want it okay putting these uh, laces on my honeys is like a you know, you want it snug to fit your hair. You don't want it all loose. So you may have to pull a little bit and yank a little bit. And just tell your client or, you know, just keep your neck stiff. So therefore, it can go smoothly and it won't be hurting you. But you have to kind of pull it forward. You got to get it up there. You know what I'm saying? So um, with the more coats you put, the longer that it will last. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. I have one on now, y'all know I do not use that glue. I use uh, got to be. So therefore I could take it off every couple days or whatever. But I put me two coats of the ghost bond on there. Oh my God, it was going nowhere. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it, it was just getting hot. It was getting aggravating. It was just, yeah. Because I'm not just used to wearing it all the time like that. So I um, went in with some alcohol. I'll make a video on that if you guys want to see that, how you remove a wig that's glued down to the T. Let me know. Leave me a comment below, and uh, we can do that because it is a method to it, and you do not want to be messing up those edges, okay? So we got to do this properly, my honeys. Even though I, you know I grow hair, I don't play. I don't want to sit here and take it out to have to grow it. So it, it is a method to it, and I will show you guys. But there I go. Um, I'm I'm parting out some hair, my honey, just so I can have some type of something to help me guide what I'm trying to do, okay? I'm trying to dig that comb through those strands of hair and mush down that um, lace into that clear glue, okay? So that way her install would be done. And even at that point, it's not dried, okay? It's not dry. It's just more so... It's, it's laid okay you still need to go in and blow dry and tie it down and do all of that or whatever you know just to make sure that you don't have any pieces that's lifting or however so since she didn't have the whole complete lace it wasn't brand new this is what we had left after i glued down what she needed okay all of that rest of that she doesn't need because everything else is pretty much was mapped out and guided through with your eyes you know so you don't need that and when you have extra lace sitting around on your forehead that's what makes it look wiggy you know if you don't need that extra lace do not use it okay like don't try to keep it and save it this is custom to you now so at the end of the day um once you go cutting off the excess lace I kind of pushed uh, what's left down with that comb and not your skin because all these little oils and stuff come from everywhere. And you don't want that because it will mess with how your wig would stick down. So I just used that metal piece on that comb or that metal piece of those scissors and just kind of mesh it down in there. And it sticks properly and it sticks good. And then I will go in and um, if it was any pieces that looked a liffy and I needed it, Okay, and it was like, man, I can't do this because it ain't going to look right. Then I would go in and put glue just on that area. Okay, with a small tooth type of comb, you know, the little metal tip. Use that metal tip, go in there and smear it down like you would have before. Let it turn clear and everything and just put that little piece down. But if you can cut it off, cut it, honey. Don't even try to save it because I'm telling you it makes it look so much more natural okay these scissors are from a eyebrow kit that i had they are so precise they are very very tiny it gets right in that lace you know usually you will go in there and try to cut your lace zigzaggy with those little scissors and those little cuts that it's doing you don't even have to worry about cutting zigzaggy because it cuts every piece of lace that's not even needed anyway so right here we're just assisting that glue to kind of dry into that um lace 
because I kind of, you know, mushed it in with the comb. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and tie it down and let it further dry. You could be doing something else at that point, okay? You can start flat on your hair, curling your hair, however, you know. And then we're going to worry about the parting and all that towards the end. You know, once we get our lace secure. Because once you go in trying to put mousse and all that on there right now, it's not even probably completely dry. It's going to lift it. So we need it completely dry and you will have more wiggle room to put that mousse on there without worrying about it lifting and everything. When it comes to the baby hairs, my honey, is because she wants baby hairs, um, you don't want to just pull out just enough, okay? You want to pull out a little more than needed because when you go to swoop it and blend it back with the extra hair, or the other hair rather, then it will look more natural. You see how much I actually got? I did not just take it from the tip of the lace, okay? I, I'm making it wide. Pretty much. So when I go cutting on that and comb it and swooping it back, there won't be any long hairs in my way messing up my baby hairs. Everything will just lay smoothly and that short part will just be blended with the rest of the hair going back. But that's to me the, the key to a good baby hair, okay? And if that area that I'm pulling on was thick, okay, I would went in and plucked it on out right then and there okay you don't want to lay the baby hairs with those areas just super thick or whatever because then once you lay it you can pluck it out after you you know let it dry and everything but if you see that problem now just go ahead and handle it so we're just parting out that section pretty much and we're going to go ahead and proceed to tie this uh lace down so therefore that glue can completely dry When you go cutting on the baby hair, okay, my honeys, you don't want to cut it so short either, okay? So I would, I start a little long. I cut it eyebrow length, okay? I start there. And then as I go to swoop it and this and that, if you cut it too short, you may not be able to even make a, a cute style out of it, you know? That's if you want them dramatic and swoopy and all that extra stuff. But for real, for real, that's what I like when I see a baby hair, okay? They've had, they got some real natural baby hairs out here where you cut them so short that all you're doing is swooping it along the lace. You're not swooping it back to the hair to blend. You're just swooping it along the lace. And I be seeing like Megan and Style and all them with them baby hairs. I like them too. That's like a little more natural, okay? And it's not all extra like. So um, I'll do, try to do a video on that too, my honeys. If you want to see that, leave me a comment below. But we're going to do that too because I think that's going to be the new thing for me, okay? But clients, they want the baby hairs, baby. They want to be dramatic. They ain't on that. So I'm going to give them exactly what they're looking for, kale style. And this is me cutting them, okay? They're not too short and they're not too long. So as I go swooping on them, if there is any pieces that may be too long, then I can go in and cut it in the process of moosing it down. That's no biggie, okay? When you go in to moose it, it is like a fast process. You gotta hurry up and get in there, but then again, you have to take your time and make sure it's good, okay? I personally need a nice, good, thick foam. I went to, what, Family Dollar and was picking up phone because I couldn't make it to Sally's or whatever. And I needed something right then and there. And, oh, my God, it's just so watery. The minute that you put it on your head, it just starts breaking down to water. And then it just messes that lace completely up, all that hard work you've done. This right here is the mousse that I have been using for years, my honeys. And I have also showed you guys in multiple videos what mousse this is and um hopefully i'll try to put a clip in but you see that it's just still mousse it's still sitting up there in bulk it's not a uh, melting turning watery and i am able to go along that hairline with ease okay that mousse is what helps you to swoop and dip them baby hairs 
without it, that hair is very stubborn. You know, it's very good hair, but if you don't have the guidance of that mousse, to me, it's not going to work out the way you want, okay? And you want to be able to use your mousse freely. With this other mousse I'm talking about, this very watery, so what we're going to call it is cheap, okay? I don't want to even say cheap. That's good for people with natural curly hair and you want to wear that wet look with the wig and all that. It's really good for that. But when it comes to this, oh my God, I would have been to put uh, more mousse on the top of her head at least 50 times just to get it right. And guess what? That one side would not have even been done and it would have been lifted looking dumb. But guess what? I still got to do the other side, okay? And it's, it's a mess. Invest, honey. That's what it's called. Um, you you go through things that is mistakey and you learn from those mistakes and then you just invest in what you know is best, you know. So I feel like mousse matters. So if I have to go spend a little more on mousse to get it to look like this, my honeys, like I'm telling you, these, these other mousses is melting out here. I'm talking about it would have been running down her whole face right now like she just was in the shower and got her hair wet. I did not like that. I would not use that on a client. Uh, I used it on myself and figured it out that way. So I have not had the, anyone's hair and their lace was lifting while I was installing. Because I still had this mousse that I'm using right here in this video left. Okay. Guess what? It's gone. I'm on my way to Walmart right now. Y'all know that's my spot. <laughs> I'm going to get at least three, four of them bottles. Because it's like, oh my God. I thought it was a game. You know, I'm like, I could just go pick some mousse up. No, you need that right mousse. People use the, what it's called, Niobe's or however. I've never used that because I've always used this and I live by it. But I heard that's some pretty good mousse too as far as being thick enough. And then, yes, honeys, I'm going to go buy that and test it out and let you honeys know what I think about it. So, and that's just that, okay? But we made it through the baby here successfully. No lift no anything. Okay, now that she's drying, we're going to just, you know, um, kind of define the part and little things like that. Make sure that all that hair is laying flat. Even if you have to part through these this hair, my honey, to get it to lay the way that you want it. Because you know how these, um, these wigs are, or these laces, rather. If your part is going this way, it's going to be hard to get it to go that way. It needs assistance. This right here is the same thing, my honeys, as getting a straightening comb and going through it like that as well. Okay, I'll just go ahead with the mousse process because, first of all, I don't even want to risk messing up the lace with the straightening comb. Okay, let's just be clear. And she has to dry those baby hairs before I can even move further. So, I'm talking, they have to be completely dry, not a stain on it crunchy whatever it's going to be it has to be dry because if you use it moves you're able to comb them baby hairs right out and they're going to be so soft and looking good so since she has to dry it anyway i might as well throw that mousse on that top and get it to lay flat instead of going in later with you know the straightening comb and all that which works perfectly fine you know do what's best for you but look how it came out my honey it's just as good okay I definitely had a clip of curling her hair and everything, but I had to transfer from that camera and bring it to the this and that. It was a lot. So I'm like, you know what? I'll get them what they, you know, if y'all want to see that, comment below. But she got her some brows, okay? And she got her a nice natural looking install. I bleached them knots. They kind of over bleached my honeys. I don't mind it. I love it. Okay, so... Uh, it's something about the over bleach look to me. I don't know if that's played out or not, but I like it. Thank you, my honeys. I just want to let y'all know that the website is done. But I will see you, honeys, on the next one. Uh, 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 uh. Bye, guys. Love you guys.